Now that we've got a navigation system in place and all of our pages created, let's go back and start to populate it. We'll start with the home page and I'll start by placing some images. And we will ultimately delete this little marker here as well. So I'm just going to close my preview window here. And here's my blank home page. As I said, I'm just going to delete that little text box. And I want to place an image in the background. If we go back to the finished one, let me just quickly show you here. We've got this full frame image which will expand based on the size of the browser window. So we'll always fill the window. So let's just go back over to our blank one here. And we would do that through the browser fill. So up top here I'm just going to click browser fill. And you can see down here in orange we have an add image button. And I basically just need to find the image and I have a folder called Muse Content. And Waldo Lake open and under the settings here under fitting you have tile scale to fill scale to fit etc I'm going to use scale to fill so regardless of the browser size it will always fill the background and scrolling is on which means it would scroll potentially if I had enough content to allow for a scroll so we'll just click away to close that box and I will do a save Now the next thing I'd like to do actually is place an image of a beer bottle on the screen here. And the way we place images is under File, there's actually a command called Place. And you can see the keyboard on the Mac is Command-D. I'll assume it's Control-D on the PC. And I've got a beer bottle with a clear background called Beer Clear. We'll just bring that in. If I click there, it releases it and drops it. There we go. Now if I want to reduce or enlarge that, I can simply grab the corner and drag it. Now the default here is that it will constrain on its own. If I wanted to distort it, I would have to hold my shift key. So I'm holding my shift key right now and it's distorting. I will undo that. So resizing is simply dragging the corners. And I can drag that and it will snap to the guides or to other elements on the page. And I'll just leave that there for now, but that's the place command under the file menu. Again, I will save that. Now we're going to work with text here as well. I do have a document with the provided text. And what I want to do is create a text box over here put that text in and ultimately I'd like the text to wrap around this beer bottle which I'll place kind of in the midst of the text but we'll do that once the text is created so I'm just gonna go out to my finder here and again I do have a text item I believe it's in the content folder called beer text simple text file so basically each page is a paragraph here. So I'm going to grab this first paragraph and copy it. Edit copy. Uh, swing back to Muse. Create a text box. Now when I hold this down, there's a type tool and a vertical type tool. I just want to use the regular type tool. And then I click and drag to establish a text area. And I'll just snap to these guys here. And with my insert point flashing inside, I'm going to just go edit paste. There's my text. Now to edit it, I will highlight it. Let me just check if I need to highlight it. I'm just going to click my arrow. Yes, I do. So let me click and drag across it to highlight all that text. And it makes sense because I should be able to go in there and isolate a separate letter or a word or a section and make different changes. If I wanted that text to be white, for example, I can go in here and choose the white chip. If I wanted to make it bigger, I can either do the pull down menu or I can use the arrows or I can type in a number. Hit my tab key to enter that. I guess my return key. And I also have the choice of fonts over here. So let's talk about fonts for a second because we are talking about websites. 
Uh, in here, the, the fonts that will always work are called standard fonts. They used to be called web fonts, but they seem to have used that name for something else, which I'll talk about in a second here. Uh, the standard fonts are basically fonts that are included with all operating systems, that is to say all Mac systems and all Windows systems. And you can see the list of them here, Arial, Georgia, Helvetica, Verdana, those are the common ones. Now, this little middle section, for web, let's say for some reason they do not have the first pick font, you do have a second pick and a third choice. Helvetica News, the second one here, and Helvetica Plain is the third choice here. That's in the event that this one is not on the computer, nor this one, nor this one. And it has three dots. I'm going to assume it ends in a sans serif, which we'll look for any sans serif. So with all of these highlighted, it is currently Arial, as I can see here. If I did want to change it to, say, Times, I can just simply select that. Let me go back to Arial and leave it at Arial. Now, going back to this list, we have two other sections, basically. Recently used fonts, actually three others, which I'll scroll down to. Web fonts, which means that you can use fonts that are now situated on a web server, but to use these ones in particular, you do need an account with Adobe to use certain fonts here. So you would go find it, load it up, and then it would be available to you. Let me scroll down here. And what are called system fonts are all the other fonts on your computer. Basically, I'll just say stay away from these. They would have to be loaded on their respective computer to view it. So in my opinion, they're not worth considering. However, this is a big however. If you just want to use like a headline or a small bit of text and use one of these, what will happen is that if you do use it, it will convert it into a graphic. So it will no longer be editable. It will not be read by search engines, but it will look correct. But it will actually turn it into a graphic. So for editable fonts, basic fallback is to use what are called the standard fonts. Okay, so I'm just going to close that now. And those are the very basics of applying fonts on a page. And we'll talk about formatting here as well. You can format it to all bold, italic, underline, centering it, justify right, etc. I can create lists with bullet points or numbers here as well. And ultimately, I can actually create a link with a word. So maybe we'll try that right now. Maybe I'll create a link to one of my other pages. So I'll just highlight the word beer bottle. And if I go to hyperlinks, I can go to the pull down menu. And what it shows me are the available pages. So I could just pick beer one. I could go to a file to have a download occur. Or I can type in a full web address, so for example, HTTP, etc. And then I would hit my enter key. Uh, for this, I will choose beer one. Okay, and you can see it has the standard formatting for a hypertext link. Let me save this. And I'll do a preview and we'll test that link. So you can see the little hand there, click it, and we are on page two. So it does work. Let me go back to home. So, so far so good. We've learned the basics of applying text, formatting it, creating a hypertext link within the body of the text. We also brought in an image, resized it, positioned it anywhere on stage. I'm just going to go back to design view to make some changes. Now I want, as I said, I want to actually have the text wrap around and there's no actual wrap around for text around images per se, but there is a method that we can use that will work. What I need to do is basically put it in what's called inline in with the text. So I would copy it, paste it next to a, one of the words basically, I'll just put my insert 
point at a specific spot, paste it in, and it reacts like another character, then we can do some wrap features. So I'll start by going to my selection tool, highlighting that image, I will copy it. I'll just go in here and let's say I put my insert point right here. I'm just going to double click inside the text here. I'll actually return this to make a new paragraph and I'll insert it right there. So I'm just going to go edit paste and it's in the text. Now the wrap is not so beautiful right now but I'll go back to my arrow tool and I'll just click on the graphic. We do have a section called wrap so I'll click that open and basically the second one or the third one will allow the text to wrap around it left or right. So I'll click wrap on the right and you can see that it does wrap around the bounding box. Unfortunately I don't believe I can wrap it around the custom shape of the bottle so I do have some limitations but I can change the offsets of how far this this text will come to the image so let's say for example this top one I can increase you can see it, it's increasing in distance here and right now the link is on so it's actually increasing on all sides I noticed it was increasing on all sides so let me just turn off the link and if I just want to deal with the top you can see how it's moving that down and for the bottom and the left it's giving me more breathing space basically so working with these I can customize how much gap there is between the image and the text and that's the wrap feature it is limited to an extent but if you do want to wrap text around a graphic this is the way to do it otherwise you'd have to do it manually and fake it by putting in coming into your text, double clicking, and basically just putting spaces in, for example, like this, and faking it, which is doable. But there we have text wrapping around a graphic. So let me just highlight this other graphic and just get rid of that, and save my file. So again, to summarize, we brought in an image using the place command, we brought in text, or we generated text rather, with the text tool by clicking and dragging in a designated area. And speaking of that, let me click on it, and I can always readjust the text box, like so. So we brought in text, as I was saying. Uh, we created a hypertext link from a selected section of the text area. So if I wanted to select another word, I can go up to link. And there we go. And if I was to actually to click on hyperlinks, I can change the look and feel of that link. So maybe we'll just do that to close off this section. Let me just click edit link styles. And start, actually, you know what, let's just edit this link style to start with. It doesn't need to be blue, but it defaults to blue, but I could go in and change the normal color to anything I want, for example, green. I will go back to that blue, though. Uh, but I can have the underline show or hidden. So maybe for the normal state, it's hidden. And maybe the hover state, it shows, but then visit it inactive. It's hidden. But let me change the color for hover. I'll just give us a red here. Actually, I'll pick the chip. And I'll make the other three that same red. So hover, visited, and active. Active means this is the current page that I am on. And if I was just to move this out of the way and click it, quickly save. And I'll do a quick preview as well. And if I hover, it turns red with the outline. And if I was to stay on this page, it takes me to another page, it would appear red with no outline. Let me go back to the home page, here I am, and back to design view. So I'll call up the hyperlinks window again, edit link style, 
and we're going to create a new one. New file, or new style rather, right here. And I'll just call it Dan Red Link. I'm going to make the default color red. Okay, so I highlight it and I make my changes. So we'll just stick with that red. And for the hover, I guess we'll go with a sort of an orange color. And I think I can drag that over. No, I can't. But I can save it by clicking this Add Swatch. And there is how we get it over. And that way it will be available to, available to me for the next ones. So on Visited, I'm going to use that Swatch as well, as well as on Active. Okay. And we'll click OK. And to apply that, I simply go back up to the hyperlinks window one more time, text link styles, choose Dan Red. And you should see a change, and I do. So I will set it back to its default, but now I've created a separate style for links. And I can create a number of these. I will say the one major limitation is that it's one for the whole site. So you need to make your choice for the whole site. Otherwise, you'll have to create some custom links, which we can get into on another lesson. So once again, save site. And we've learned how to create text, manage the text, import images, bring an image into the text body to have a wraparound feel, and customize the look and feel of our hyperlinks and save different styles for the hyperlinks. And that's the basics on creating text and images and hyperlinks inside of Muse.